Oh, my apron. Hey, okay, I think that's in focus. Hi friends, happy whatever day it is. Long time no see, here I am in my apron. What's gonna happen, you already know. Um, I'm gonna be baking a blueberry pie. I've become pretty talented at making uh, my new fidget ring, by the way, pies, gluten-free pies. Uh, I'm gonna make a gluten-free pie, but you can totally make it non-gluten-free. Like it doesn't really change it, but I can obviously only vouch for the gluten-free version, which I know is incredible. I've tried it, I've made it. I wanted to show you guys how to make it. Why did I show you the butter? I'm gonna start today, I'm gonna finish it tomorrow, but today I'm just going to do the first part, which is making the pie crust. Obviously you can buy a pie crust, you can whatever. I like homemade pie crust because it makes me feel like a grandma. It makes me feel like it's special and made with love. So I like that, to each his own. This is what you need. Kryptonite. Crypto, why do you only play with things when I'm filming a video? Okay, so. Child, do you need attention? Everyone say hello to Crete tonight. Maybe a cat in the kitchen is not sanitary. Oh well, you have to get out. I love you. All right, you gotta go. I'm sorry, you're so cute. Okay, so I'm gonna wash my hands. Okay. Uh, all part of my little plan. You need pie weights, AKA dried beans work as well. Any kind of dried beans from the grocery store. It, it, it does not matter what kind you pick because it literally, they go, they go away. You don't even use it in the recipe, so. Doesn't matter. Two and a half cups of gluten-free flour or whatever flour you wanna eat. If you're a barbarian and you eat gluten still in 2022, one fourth cup of granulated sugar, one fourth teaspoon of salt, one cup of cold butter. I already said that. I should probably put that back in the in the fridge so it is cold. And then you need ice water and another egg and some some milk. But we'll get to that later. For this first part, you don't need a lot. This is just making the the base so that it's ready tomorrow. Because it's a lot. It's a lot to do in one day if you do the pie crust and the filling and the, you know, the whole thing. It, we're making it easy. As you know, I always get stressed out picking the correct bowl size. Um, we're just gonna hope this is right. So, two and a half cups of gluten-free or whatever flour. So I think I measured this out and it's exactly two and a half, but I'm gonna make sure. I like these little sifter things. Honestly, you probably should be weighing it. I never do. I don't have a wear, a wear of scale. So we're just gonna wing it as I do basically everything in my life ever. Ah! I don't know why I was so excited about that. It's just a cup of flour. Gluten-free. There's one. And then basically I just do this for 10 years until it's all sifted. You gotta trust me on the sifting though. I swear every time I don't do this, it doesn't turn out as good. We have officially sifted one cup of flour. Now we're gonna do this another one. And then for this first part, you're just gonna add in your dry ingredients. So basically it's just the flour, the salt, and the granulated sugar. Why can I, I always feel like I say granulated wrong. It just doesn't roll off the tongue like you would wish it would. Granu granulated sugar. See, it sounds better in a British accent. Granulated sugar. See, that's how it was supposed to say. It was supposed to say granulated sugar. That sounds correct. Granulated sugar. Okay, and now for the half a cup. So I'm assuming, oh, I left that in there. Okay, and then here's the heaping half a cup. That looks heaping to me. And then we're gonna do one fourth cup of the granulated sugar and one fourth teaspoon of the, it should be kosher salt. This is not, but you know. All right, done and done. One fourth. We're using that for dog food right now. Okay, should I maybe just use half of this? Do I trust my guesstimation skills that much? Nah, we're gonna have to. Half of this. Jeez, if it will open. Okay, that looks like a pretty even half. I feel good about that. I wanna trust it. Well, we're trusting it now. I might have kosher salt. Let's check. Close enough. So we're gonna do one fourth teaspoon of that. And then we're gonna mix it all up. And I always put a little bit more salt in than the recipe calls for because your girl's a little salt crazed. Triple Pisces for ya. Where art thou? Where's... Where is she? Oh, it's in the knife drawer. Yay! Okay, 
so this next part is a little bit time sensitive. And I only say that because it's really important that you keep the butter cold. Well, first of all, I gotta get my ice water ready. There's so many aspects to baking a pie. We need one cup of cold butter. So one of these is half a cup, so we need two sticks. Should I be cutting the butter up on a napkin? No, probably doesn't make any sense, but we're doing it anyway. I'm basically just cutting them into little cubes and then cutting them in half. In a minute, I'm gonna need a cinnamon mint woman hug me up. Two shots in the cup. Yeah, so actually everything I just said, <laughs> I take it back. I forgot that I actually do cut them into fours. They're like little tiny cube babies. So once I cut up this first thing of butter, I'm gonna take these butters that I already have and I'm gonna put them in the freezer because I want this butter to be so cold. Ah, you don't wanna freeze them though. I'm just putting them in there for like a few minutes just so they get extra cold. Oh, also, if I didn't mention this before, blueberry pie has fruit in it, so technically it's healthy. I mean, to be fair, the majority of this pie is blueberries with an absurd amount of sugar surrounding them, but still blueberries. I'm just gonna leave that in the freezer for a little bit. Also, here's another thing, blueberry pie, you have to have it with vanilla ice cream. I'm sorry, that's just how it is. It's just one of those things that is non-negotiable. Okay, wait, take a moment. How cute is this little bowl of butter? Ah, look at so cute. It's like a little I just want to pop it in my mouth. I'll get sick though. Oh, and you need parchment paper. Is it parchment paper? No, no, it's not. That's not what it's called. Oh, uh, plain wrap, AKA, what, what the frick do they call this? Why can't I think of that? Saran wrap. There it is. <laughs> She's a brilliant one. After this step, like when I add the butter in, we're gonna ditch the whisk and we're only gonna use our little, our little hands. I currently have one white nail. Don't know what that's about. I need to get my nails done. In a minute. Okay, I need to... <sighs> so we have the dry ingredients and then we're gonna put the butter in. And basically what you're gonna do is you're just, you'll see. Basically you just kind of work it around with your hands. I should probably take my rings off. Good thing I thought of that because I'm pretty sure the last time I lost my ring in the dough and then I had to find it and then the dough's consistency was all messed up and then I was like, ah, it was a whole thing. Um, So we're gonna put those. I feel like, you know in movies when they're like, get rid of all your weapons and they like take one off their shoulder, one out of their pocket and one off this pocket and they give them all up and they're like, and they have like one more gun like in their sock or something. That's what I feel like right now with the rings. Oh, see, that's that's how it would go. Anyways, I digress. Sweet little foster dog. Kryptonite is just staring her down right now. The funny thing is like literally none of this could be happening right now and I could just be making this up and you would have no idea. Oh my God, hey, Henry the ostrich. You don't know. There could actually be an ostrich there. Just saying. Okay, butter. Now that's some cold butter. I'm gonna empty all this butter into this bowl. The first thing you wanna do before you start mushing it around is kinda try to like get the flour to coat the edges of the little butter pieces. So you wanna kinda like toss that flour over those little butter pieces before you start doing it so that the butter doesn't get too much on your hands and it kinda stays within the flour threshold. We're gonna kinda like crumble these little butter pieces up and this is gonna take a little bit. This is what they mean when they say made with love. They mean by your own very hands, ringless, feel naked. Kryptonite, now would be a great time to cause a ruckus because my hands are coated in flour and I literally couldn't do anything about it. Haha, -ha, you don't understand English. He definitely does understand English though. You'll kind of know when you're done. I'll show you what it's supposed to look like. Okay, so you can kind of see how it's like flaky like that, but you like, it's not completely, there's like little pieces of butter, but none of them are like huge. It's, it's just flaky, you know, like that. So all the recipes that I looked at added about five tablespoons of ice water, but I always have to add more than that, but we'll see. I would start with like three, see how that vibes, and then you just, same thing, mix it up with your hand. This is when it gets sticky. Oh, that might be enough actually this time. So weird, it changes every time. Normally I have to put in way more. So what you want is you don't want it to be perfectly sticky. You want it to still be able to crumble, but you want it to be kind of like, oh, you know that sand, like the kinetic sand that they have in like those stores where like when you press it together, it stays like this. But as soon as you put some pressure on it, it falls apart. That's kind of what you want it to feel like. You're going to take this little glob that you've created and you're gonna clear a little space. I probably should have done this before, but <laughs> that's okay. You're gonna take this, what I mentioned earlier, this handy dandy cling wrap, AKA Saran wrap. You're gonna kind of make like a little 
little workspace here and it's gotta be long enough to wrap around. So you're gonna have this little saran wrap area. You're just gonna take this dough that you've created here and you're gonna kind of mush it into one being. It's okay if it's falling apart a little bit. It doesn't need to be perfect. Just get it all in there and then you're gonna push this into like a circle shape so that when it is time for you to roll it out, it's almost like kind of ready to be rolled. It's easier than rolling like a full sphere. A flat circle is what you want. Like this. You're gonna put it in the fridge. I like to make this a day ahead just so that I'm not doing all of it in one day because it's a lot. You have to refrigerate it though for I'd say an hour, at least an hour. You can do it overnight. And if you wanna freeze it and like save it and just, you know, be prepared for, I don't know, some time that you need to spontaneously bake a pie, then you can keep it in your freezer and like defrost it overnight or something, I don't know. So now that we have that shape down, print a little circle. We're going to just kind of wrap that up as best as you can. I kind of like to fold it over like this and then I also like to after I put it in the cling wrap like this to also keep the, the the shape forming going you know there she is a ball of dough quick pro tip put your rolling pin in the fridge because it keeps it cold so when you're rolling your pie out tomorrow it's not gonna get warm on you and get all floopy you're welcome so I'm gonna put this in the fridge I'm gonna make the rest of it tomorrow and I will be back in three two one and that's, that's, where I'll, that's where I'll cut it, and then, you know, I'll, I'll jump into frame and I'll go. One! Haha. -ha. Okay, so here we are with the dough you saw me make yesterday. I'm gonna take it out of the fridge and let it kind of thaw for like 10-ish minutes, 10 to 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how long your dough takes to get like kind of, oh, it's still pretty rock solid, but yeah, it'll eventually get to where it's trying to go. I have a little pie sheet here. I can put the link to this in the description, but it's a cute little pie mat that I got on Amazon. I'm in love with it. And it just really, really helps keep that circular shape going on. Here's my little cold rolling pin. So I put a bunch of flour down on this little mat. And then also you're gonna wanna preheat your oven to 425 because that's where you're gonna bake the crust. You're gonna wanna put flour on it, all around it, just to kind of make sure that it doesn't stick to the nice little mat we have here. Also, another pro tip, have your pie bowl or whatever, whatever bowl you're using, have it ready because when this is done rolling out, you're gonna wanna really quickly transfer that. It is looking pretty good if I do say so myself. The nice thing about the pie mat is you can see, like right now it looks like it's a perfect circle, but you can see on the pie mat certain areas are better than others and you can kind of even the whole thing out. So now, here's the tricky part. You're gonna take this and you're gonna put a little bit more flour on it and you're going to, I already have stress about this. Okay, you're gonna have this pie bowl ready to go. Try to do this whole thing really quickly. You're gonna roll the dough around your roller and transfer it, put it in, and then flip the edges up. You'll kind of see me as I do it. All right. <laughs> if it crumbles, it's not the biggest deal in the world. You can kind of just press it back together, but it is very helpful if you can do it all in one piece. I'm debating putting this whole thing in the fridge just so that I can get it cold. Okay, let's see if that did anything good. Not, didn't, no, did not go as well as I thought that would go. But you know what? No, it's okay. I can fix this. Oh my, this is atrocious. Okay, well, good news is we can do it again. I wanna believe in you. Oh, here we go. This is looking somewhat promising. Okay, and then you're gonna fold these edges. You're gonna lift them up and let the middle kind of sink down. I can work with that. Hey, there we go. Oh, oh. You don't love that, but you know what? That's okay. That could have gone worse. I'm proud of us. And see how like, instead of pushing that down, I kind of lifted the sides up. That's what you want to do. And then you kind of pinch it all the way around just so that it comes up off of the rails. The rails, I guess that's what you would call them. Okay, you're gonna take your knuckle, right? Make it in a little triangle shape. And we're kind of gonna follow like the grooves of the bowl. Kind of just give it that nice little like crisscross edge that everybody knows and loves. An absurd amount of time later, I have just spent, you don't even want to know, making sure that this looked like this. <gasps> That's correct, Mickey Mouse. Oh boy. <gasps> so to hold that beautiful shape, we're gonna put this in the freezer for 15 minutes and let her chill while we heat up this oven. You're gonna heat it up to 425. Then we're gonna take some parchment paper and we're gonna kind of cut this into a pretty little circle. 
Close enough. Almost like a circle. There we go. That's more circle-ish. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lay this out and put the pie weights in. You're gonna put that in there for 10 minutes. You're not gonna bake it all the way. You're just doing it enough so that it kind of solidifies so you can put the egg wash on. The beautiful, perfect shape pie crust. So I'm gonna put this in here, right? Okay. Classy. You're gonna push it into all those little edges. Done and done. All you need for egg wash is one large egg and a tiny splash of any kind of milk you wanna use. Boom. I actually don't have uh, milk, so I'm gonna use half and half. Uh, I think that'll work. LOL. Boop. That's a splash. That totally qualifies as a splash. Kind of mix that up. I probably should have done this in a bigger bowl. Yeah, we're, we're gonna get a bigger bowl. Pour that back in there so it's easier to get with this little brush guy. Kind of make sure that you grab it from under so you don't mess up your pretty little creation. Hey guys, I brought you over here so you can see a little bit better. But basically I am just poking these little holes all over it and then make sure you get like on the sides here because you just really want to make sure that the egg wash can really really like sink in you can't overdo it unless of course you're tearing your pie apart but you know just don't don't do that use common sense please now we're gonna take this handy dandy egg wash that i showed you before and you're just literally gonna slather that on there all over it and up the sides like that, see? And you're gonna put that on the edges too, so make sure you also do that. It's gonna be messy, just try not to like ruin your little bumps, you know? Just be kind to them. They've been through so much already. Alrighty, then you're gonna take a paper towel and you're gonna wipe off all the sides of the pan so it doesn't get all weird. You're just gonna find any area on the pan it looks like got messy. So now is when I'm gonna sprinkle the brown sugar and I'm just gonna do a little tiny bit. I'm do this over the sink. Whatever stays, stays. Whatever doesn't, doesn't. At this point, you can either use a pie crust protector or you can take aluminum foil and just put it around just to kind of make sure it doesn't brown before you have the filling in. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, and now I'm just gonna put it in for another 10 minutes. And now it's time to make the filling. This is the fun part. I love this part. So first we're gonna do the three fourths cup of sugar. I don't have the one fourth measuring thing right now. So we're just gonna go over the cup and eyeball it. Oh wait, does it say on here? Oh, it does. Would you look at that? That I like. So three fourths cup of sugar. And then we're gonna do one fourth of a cup of flour. Nice. Then we're gonna do one fourth of a teaspoon of salt. And again, you know me, anytime there's salt, I always make sure that it is heaping because I love my salt. And then I'm gonna whisk all that together. You always wanna do your, your dry ingredients first. Whisk all that together. And then I'm gonna take one, ooh, the lighting just got drastically different. All right, and then you're gonna take one large egg and put that in there. Boom. What I do is I kind of make a little pocket in the middle of the, the stuff. I wish I could show you. Oh, it's right here. Make a little pocket like that. And then of course, again, the one measurement we don't have, one fourth of a cup of sour cream. Everyone always thinks it's crazy because I add, oh, I add sour cream in like all of my recipes. I'm telling you something about sour cream in the majority of, like if you see sour cream in a recipe, it's probably a good recipe. All right, that seems half-ish. And our crust is ready. My face was just blasted with 5,000 degrees of heat. <gasps> Voila! All of our little spikies are still on, so we love that. Now we're just gonna finish making this custard. I'm gonna whisk all that together, everything I just mentioned. Now, I'm going to take one teaspoon of vanilla, put that in there. One tablespoon of lemon juice. Trust me, I'm all for the sweet, but the lemon juice really helps make it more, it just adds something to it. It gives it more flavor, it brings out the blueberry flavor. I promise your pie will not taste like lemons. I don't like lemon desserts, so I totally get it. But you gotta trust me on this one. You need that, and then you also need one teaspoon of lemon zest. Boom, can't be any fresher than that, my friends. Lemon zest. There's the lemon zest, hooray. And then the last thing, oh, not the last thing, but three tablespoons of cornstarch. And three. Nice! Then you're gonna mix that all together. And then you should just have something that looks like this. It's like very 
almost cake battery, but it's very custardy. It, it's a custard. You would assume that a custard would seem custardy, and it does. Surprise, surprise. Two tablespoons of melted butter goes in this. Totally forgot about that. Fun. Two tablespoons of butter melted into the custard. Okay, and then the last component, 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 the last component of this whole little shebang is the topping. I like to do kind of like a crumbly thing on top. I know a lot of people like to do the strips. Not my favorite. I like to have the kind of sweet thing on the top. It's kind of like sprinkles, you know, it gives it texture. And then we're gonna preheat this to 420. I'm excited. This is gonna be so marvelous. And then obviously blueberries, but you're gonna put the blueberries in first and then the custard and then this topping. I'm just going in there. I'm just using my hands like a woman does. Oh, that was interesting. Didn't mean it like that, but hey, you know. I'm gonna get my blueberries. So I have right now four cups of them right here. And I'm gonna put that in my pie here. Yay. Again, bringing y'all over so you can get a better seat. Just gonna take this custard and I'm gonna pour that all over these blueberries. There we go. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna put it all over the top. Absolutely cover it. Nice. She's so beautiful. So this is what she's looking like before she goes in the oven. I'm probably gonna cover up that with tin foil just because I really don't want the edges to be burnt. And that's it. So next step and kind of the final step, you're gonna bake it on 420 for 20 minutes and then you're gonna bake it on 350 for 50 minutes. So if I were you, I would put the aluminum foil on first because then it's not gonna be like crazy hot when you're trying to put it on. And then you take it out maybe halfway through the second one, like halfway through the 350 time. You get what I'm saying. Voila. Yay, we did it. Hey, okay. Hey friends, so today is the next day. So it's picnic day. I have the pie. I didn't want to finish recording yesterday because to be honest with you, I was tired and I want to take my makeup off. So we are doing this now. It came out, it looks beautiful. I'll show it to you. Isn't she pretty? Look at her, I love her. There she is, the finished product. She's beautiful. Anyways, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this baking video and um, let me know if you want to know how to make more pies. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day, and that's it. Come on. Yes. You see. <laughs>